Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Devils TV. Now Manchester United draw with Chelsea one all and it was a game I didn't really expect to happen to be honest. I thought Manchester United um, would have played exactly like the way they did against Spurs where we just wouldn't let them break on us where, they, where we stopped their attacking players doing damage. And it was one of them games where no team looked like scoring. No team deserved to win, to be honest. And it kind of reminded me of the Real Sociedad game, to be honest, where Real Sociedad got a lucky penalty right at the end and obviously got a game, won the game. And it was a game that shouldn't of uh, what's the word? It was a game that sh where no team should have won. It should have stayed a draw. And to be honest, I I, I was going mad when McTominay took down um, Broje, I think his name is, the, the Chelsea young striker. So, yeah, my, my, my granddad and my dad was talking about how you see that all the time in the Premier League and I was just there like, it doesn't matter. Like, you shouldn't be making such a rookie mistake like that. McTominay didn't need to grab him. McTominay was very inexperienced. I did a very rookie mistake. And I even wrote it on my notes where McTominay cost us a point, but then obviously went on and scored. But, yeah, it's it's a game that it, it just feels awkward. Because United looked more dominant in the first half. United were the, were the more attacking team. But for some reason... Chelsea just didn't really attack us and didn't really cause us any threats. Obviously, they had that chance where Chalaba um, headed it from a corner and it hit the crossbar. But apart from that, I can't really remember any out-and-out -out chances where Chelsea actually put United in danger. So you could put credit to the solid work of the defence for, um, for, for that case. So the defence played really well. And just speaking of defence, I might as well get it off my chest now. Varane it seems to be injured again and it's not looking good. Varane is a crucial part to Manchester United. And yeah, his injury record is starting to get very shaky. That It looks like a bad injury. He was getting very frustrated. You saw him crying. And it's, it's just very frustrating, like I said. And you just don't want a player like Varane to be out for a long time. I mean, look how much we're missing the likes of Martial. Van der Beek, Maguire for rotations, obviously they're not starters but these are players that you need for rotation that are crucial and Lindelof coming on just didn't seem to give me any confidence and we conceded a goal when, when Lindelof came on and it just seems that when Varane goes off with, with injuries, it happened in the City game and it happened tonight, that when Lindelof comes on he's still an average defender and he's not good enough. McTominay, oh, he's frustrated me, he's just lazy, he's inexperienced, he's average and I've, and I've praised McTominay a lot this season because he has improved and it just makes me think how bad he was last season but I'm going to call out players when they play badly and like like any fan does and if you, if you hate certain players because I don't hate any player whatsoever and it, it, it's it's wrong to have agendas against players because like Bruno for example I've criticised Bruno since I've started this channel because he's not played well since I started the channel but then on Spurs he had a great night he was man of the match in my eyes and he had a great game and I gave him a lot of praise so it doesn't it doesn't matter so all you can go off is judging off players of how they performed that game so it doesn't matter if they scored a hat trick in the last game and then get a red card in the second game you, you have to due to their performance by their how they played that game and there was a lot of again it, it reminded me of the Newcastle game the players just didn't seem interested they, they didn't seem aggressive they didn't seem fierce or challenging and it like I said it was just very frustrating from my end so uh, there was not really much to talk about really Rashford again I mean that chance where it was in the it was obviously in the first half, and um, Rashford uh, took a heavy touch, and then um, what's his name, Kepper, the goalkeeper, came charging out to Rashford to put pressure on him because he knows Rashford's composure is absolutely terrible, and I feel like that's what people haven't really noticed really that 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 Rashford's composure isn't the best at all, and I've only noticed that tonight, and I was saying that. Really, if you're in that position 
because Rashford just side foots it, side foots it right into Kepa's arms. Now I know Kepa would make himself look big and everything, but he was on his knees still. So if I honestly thought instead of Rashford chipping it, if he got his foot under the ball and lifted it over the keeper and did a chip, that's a goal. All right, but Rashford he panics and just tries and shoots. He shoots way too early or shoots way too late. I need to find the perfect time to shoot. But again, like Thierry Henry said about the Spurs game, he has his head down when he shoots. He doesn't look at the keeper before he shoots, and he just he just hits and hope it seems. And he just he just tries and gets pure power every single time. Like he does pure power when he could when he should side foot a shot and try and curl it in or he'll side foot a shot when he needs to full on blast it and that's my frustration with Rashford if we're playing him as a number 9 he needs to learn how to finish properly Sancho again another player struggled I don't think he had a good game yet again I'd honestly start giving Alanga or Garnacho a chance Alanga came on he looked fresh he got in behind Alanga made quite a bit of a difference he created two chances for United uh, when he came on so for me Alanga, give him a chance in the next game. We're against, well, obviously we've got, um, sorry, I had a camera quality issue. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so Sancho struggling again. Um, Alanga, I just think that I'd just give him a chance in the next game. We're against Sheriff in on Thursday and we have West Ham, I believe, at the weekend. So, yeah. Uh, I'd honestly drop Sancho for serious. I don't care if you're bringing a youth player on or you're bringing a, an inexperienced player on. Sancho isn't good enough. Ten Hag's proved that he can drop players when they're not performing, so it's time to drop Sancho. I know every game is a must win, but right now, Sancho is doing nothing to help us win games and he's frustrating me now. And I won't be surprised that if Sancho carries on like this for the rest of the season, he'll be gone in the summer because Sancho is lazy. He doesn't run at defenders. Like, I've heard rumours that, that that Sancho's fast, and I, I've never seen it. The one time that, I mean, I had a debate with this with a guy called Mr. Ton on All for United when I was streaming. He told me that Sancho's a fast player, and I and I asked him why, how fast has he ran, and he said something about, 30, about just under 35 kilometres an hour, and that was when he was sprinting on the counter-attack, when it was the corner for Chelsea, and uh, it was la last season when it was the corner for Chelsea, it hits back all the way to Jorginho, Jorginho messes up and Sancho sprints for it and goes through on goal and then scores, right? So yes, congratulations Sancho, you could you ran at 35 km kilometres an hour your first time in your entire career. That apparently now makes you a fast player. No it doesn't. You could stick nitrous on a Fiat 500 and it goes 200 miles an hour and that makes it fast. Doesn't mean it's a fast car. So. It, it, that, that's my frustration just because he can run fast it doesn't do it consistently enough so that's why I think he's a slow winger so he doesn't get in behind he doesn't challenge like he doesn't challenge um, full backs it's like we like Sir Anthony was on the right wing where he normally is and Sancho was on the left we had Azpilicueta the right back it seemed tonight or the right sided centre back and Sancho didn't do anything to challenge him and we know Aspilicueta is a slow centre back or right back whatever position he was playing tonight then you've got Ben Cheerwell a quite a physical strong left back going toe to toe with Antony I don't know why they didn't swap over at any point during the game because until that Chelsea goal went in like Jorginho was a pen merchant he, I don't think he, I don't rate him at all he, he didn't cause it a, a, us a threat at all and I just think he didn't create enough. I didn't think he was defensively good enough. So, yeah, I feel like Jorginho's a pen merchant. I'm going to say he's not he's not in my club, so I, I'll, I'll call out Jorginho. And he's there, like, kissing the back, just like he's, like, he's, like he's won the game. And to be fair, I thought they'd won the game because I'm so used to United for the last few seasons. They, go, they, they concede a goal, their heads drop, and especially late in the game. But I need to remember now that this is Ten Hag's Manchester United and it's completely different football now. You saw the passion when Casemiro scored that goal. You saw the players crowded around him, celebrating with him. It was a beautiful moment. And 
you know what? I'm giving credit to my mum. My mum um, said when, when that Chelsea goal went in, she went, "Don't worry, Dan. We'll score. We'll score in the 93rd minute." And I was like, "No, mum. It's not Fergie time anymore. It's bollocks anymore. It's, it's history. It's it's just a myth anymore. We'll never we never score from corners. We never score from crosses anymore. It's pointless." And then obviously Casemiro scored. It was a great cross by Luke Shaw. And yeah, obviously United earned the point back, but. McTominay, I'm going to do the play ratings now, I've already said something about McTominay, but the officials, I'll say, the officials were terrible, again, there was moments for Chelsea and United where it should have been a corner, it should have been a free kick, or it should have been a throw-in, and the wrong decision was given, so that needs to be looked in at, because there was just there was just too many to count, I can count at least six for like, between both teams, that uh, there was incidents where it should have been a foul, it should have been, well, it should have been a free kick, it should have been a corner, it should have been a throw-in, and it was given to the opposite team, or it wasn't given at all. So the officials really need to be checked up. Two offsides were, were weren't given, were, were given, and no, so what was it? So it was Bruno and Sterling who were both on side when they went on the counter attack. But then the flagsman put his flag up for him thinking they were offside. That's poor That's poor officialing in my eyes. And it needs to be sorted out because what's the point in VAR if the like the actual referees don't know their own job? And that's why VAR has obviously been brought in because we've got crap for officials. But apart from that, before I give you my player ratings, I'll just say one more. Ericsson shouldn't have started. I didn't notice him at all in the game. I would have started Fred. I said that in my preview. I said I would have chosen the same team against Spurs. So maybe Ericsson is starting to struggle in that um, deep line playmaking role, like that that low number eight, should we say? And yeah, Ericsson shouldn't have started in my eyes. But yeah, um, yeah, I'll give you my player ratings now. So De Gea, I felt like his distribution was good. He couldn't. Well, he went the wrong way. For the penalty, it's a penalty. Georgini obviously does his step. He's very hard to predict with with his penalty. Obviously, he takes a step, and the goalkeeper has to dive then and there. And then obviously he he just waits for the he waits a split second for the goalkeeper to dive and he just taps it in the other way. So yeah, it, obviously his penalties penalties are pretty much a guaranteed goal. It's like a 75, 80 percent chance of scoring a goal. And with Jorginho being an absolute pen merchant that he is, he's a penalty specialist, and that's that's the only thing he's specialist at. So, yeah, I thought the game was done and done there. But until Varane went off, I thought that the United's defence looked good and I just, I, I honestly blame Lindelof. And I know he can't do anything for the goal with the corner. But I don't understand why our defenders seem to be marking the back post and they let the likes of Casemiro, McTominay and, like, Rashford and them be on the near post. So I don't know what the organisation is. I think they're told to mark certain players and then players just wander off and try and get them out of position. But the lot, I think he had a few poor passes at the start of the game. I think he's starting to look a lot very tired now. So I honestly think he should be rested. I'm not going to say drop. I'm going to say he should be rested against um, Sheriff because he needs that break. I don't know who you play. Bring in a youth player for all I care. And I know obviously I see people talking about how we need to win the Europa League, but I don't think we'll win. I think um, Real Sociedad are just too far forward, and yeah, I just don't think we'll. I think we'll come second in the Europa League. So I don't know why we're why we're challenging for it. I know I know I know you want to go till the very end, but if it, if the stars are already aligned, then why are you gonna try and change it when it's already set in stone? But yeah, so the lot for me, I give him an average six. Did I did I rate De Gea? I don't think I did. I give I give De Gea because uh, of the penalty. I'll give him a six point five. Um, yeah, I'll give him a six point five. The lot, I'll give a six. Just an average performance from the lot. Um, Varane, I gi I'd give him a seven up until his injury. So yeah, I'd give Varane a seven. Um, Martinez, I'd give a seven point five. Uh, I feel like he absolutely bullied Sterling. He bullied Mason Mount. Obviously, they tried getting in his face, and he just he just was just like, "Who the fuck are you talking to? Do one." And you just don't want like Mason Mount. We tried getting in Martinez's face, and Martinez just shoved him off. shoved him off him, and it, Mason Mount was just there, like try to kick off Mason Mount. You'll do nothing. But anyway, uh, Luke Shaw. He got the assist at the end. Uh, I'll give I'll give Luke Shaw a seven as well. 
So yeah, uh, we'll do Lindorf as well. Um, Lindorf, I'll give a six. I think that obviously he had to come on and try and fill the shoes um, of Varane, but the very big shoes to fill. To be honest, it's like my size 11 feet and getting my little sister who's like size 2 to put my shoes on it's 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 that's the best analogy I can come up with off the top of my head to be honest but um no so midfield Casemiro my man of the match got the winning goal he really helped out breaking up the play he's perfect to Manchester United United have been starved of a DM for god knows how long we've been yeah I don't know why Ole Gunnar Solskjaer never looked at a DM, he just ignored the situation, but that's obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's downfall as a manager. So, yeah, Casemiro gets my man of match, and I give him an 8. Yep, 100%. He's, he's just a difference to the team, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again, that if Casemiro got injured and Fredo McTominay had to play in his position, so it's like, I see a lot of fans saying Ericsson's crucial to this squad, and maybe he is, but... I honestly think that Fred and McTominay can play Ericsson's current position better than Casemiro's because what Casemiro does is different gravy and that's what United have been starved of for God knows how long and a DM is what, you know, like I said, United have been starved of. Um, Ericsson, I'd give him a 6. I didn't really notice. I know, I actually you know a 5.5. Uh, no, I'd give him a 6. Average performances. They weren't below average. They were just average. So, yeah, Ericsson didn't really notice in the game. And I just didn't think he was good enough, to be honest. So, yeah, I'd give Ericsson um, a six. Bruno. Um, uh, Bruno's a tough one. I'll give, I'll give him a 6.5, Bruno. I feel like he was above average. He's obviously didn't have a good enough... He didn't have a, as good of a game as he did against Spurs. But I still think he had a bet. He had just above an average game, should I say. So, yeah, I'd, give, I'd, I'd say Bruno 6.5. McTominay. I'd give him a five. That penalty was a terrible decision for him. It's a very rookie error. A very, it's just a terrible mistake to be honest. So for me, I just think that McTominay should be doing a lot better. And I don't know why he didn't track his runner. You just, you just don't need to be grabbing him like that. And I, I know um, the striker was already going down while he was holding him, but he's going to. You literally grabbing all over him. So of course he's going to go down. He's going to use that to his advantage. But yeah, so I give McTominay a five. Fred, I'd give a six. I think that Fred, yeah, he's just Fred in it. Um, he can do something really good, then cock it right up afterwards. So what? What was it? He um, he dribbled past. I think it was Lofter's cheek, and then Rashford was to his side, and he tries and do does like some sort of Rabona and tries and passes it, passes it to Rashford and goes to a Chelsea player. So that's what that's like. Just like the first excuse that well, not excuse. That's the first example that I can go with when it comes to Fred I think that's everyone in the midfield um, yeah I think, I think it was then you've obviously got Sancho I give Sancho a 5 I just think that for the time he was on the pitch for he should have been took off at half time I don't think he's good enough I, I've on, I'm obviously like I said at the start of the video I don't want to have agendas against footballers but when they're constantly shit you're going to start getting them agendas and I don't want to I'm going to judge every single player by the game they play but Sancho now has been inconsistent way too much. He's not had a he's not had a standout crucial man of the match game since he's joined Manchester United. Since he's left Dortmund, he's not been the Sancho from Dortmund. And I honestly think Sancho is better suited at a slower league. I think Sancho would thrive in the Italian league, a slower league where he can obviously step bend time on the ball and do possession possession football. But Sancho for me just isn't good enough and I'd drop him for the next game 100%. Antony, he didn't do much either really. They, that Alanga pass, um, I'd give him a 6. Antony, he, he had a few shots, he worried the keeper. And yeah, I'd just give Antony another 6. I think that he had a bit of an average performance. He had a few shots, but it, none that really troubled the keeper, it didn't seem. So Kepper had to stretch for one point, but I had this debate with my granddad that to me, it looked like it was already going out and going past the post, but my granddad said it was on it was on target because Kepper was forced to save it. But I think if Kepper left it, it would have just gone outside the post. Rashford, um, I give him a six. Um, he just needs to work on his finishing. Rashford, he's just another average performance. He had about three or four shots, 
and did not just non trouble to keep her at all, I don't think. So yeah. Alango, um I give him a six point five. He came on, he used his pace. Obviously he got he gave Jorginho that yellow card by Jorginho well obviously he was on the a counter attack and Jorginho was at full stretch and had to take him out because he was worried about the counter attack and speed of Alango. So yeah, um Alango gave a six point five to I think that was everyone actually. Um let me think. So yeah, I think that was everyone. I think only sort of four substitutions were made, weren't there? It was obviously Fred for Sancho, um, McTominay for Ericsson, uh, Lindelof for Varane, and Alanga for was it was it Anthony? Yeah, no, it was Alanga for Rashford. Yeah, so there's only four substitutions. So yeah, um, that's my player ratings for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, hopefully we beat West Ham next Sunday. I mean, I, I'm think I'm pretty confident we will because what a West Ham right now I think the 14th is it 14th 12th or 14th I think they've been in between so yeah um, obviously that, that preview will be coming next week at some point but yeah apart from that um, thank you for watching today's video uh, let me know your thoughts on the Chelsea match and yeah uh, please remember to like subscribe comment and share and I'll see you in the next one goodbye